Oh hi, thanks for watching my video. I thought today we'd just have a bit of a chat really. Sometimes I like to make more casual videos where I just talk about things that are Sims related. Usually I reserve these types of videos to have a moan, and full disclosure, I probably am going to moan a bit. But today I'm just going to talk a little bit about The Sims 5, specifically what I really hope The Sims 5 will be like and what will be included. Before I begin, just to mention that I'd love to know your thoughts on this and would encourage you to leave a comment and let me know what you think The Sims 5 will be like and what you hope to see in the franchise. So, let's talk about The Sims 5. There's the age-old compromise between quality and quantity, and I think for The Sims 5 I would much rather have less options and more love put into the options we do have. By that I mean I'd rather have only five friendly interactions if there's a detailed animation and speech bubble for each one than have 20 interactions but they all look the same and the speech bubble is just randomly generated. I'd rather have a choice of 10 meals but the sim gets out all of the utensils and use the kitchen in the same way we would than have 50 meal options but every time they cook it looks the same. I thought about The Sims 5 a lot when I was playing The Sims 2, and I always thought that the perfect Sims game would have the aesthetics of The Sims 4 with the personality of The Sims 2 and the functionality of The Sims 3. I recently made a video where I played through various interactions that Sims have in The Sims 2 that don't exist in The Sims 4, and I couldn't help notice the huge difference in detail. Sims cuddling in bed, kids actually being affected by their parents arguing, functional and detailed cars that Sims could use, the list is very long. I just would like to see a game that looks like it was fun to make. There are various elements of The Sims 4 that are fun to play with, and there are also parts of the game that really make me think that making it was just a chore. Just something that had to be thrown together on a limited time frame and thrown out onto store shelves. Kind of reminds me of when you stumble across a content creator and all their videos are well researched, well thought out, and have a lot of effort put into them. But then they become a millionaire and they don't really want to do YouTube anymore. But they also still want the money, so they just put out the bare minimum that they know is a bit shit, but they also know the money will come in. Sort of reminds me of that. The anticipated simulation game Paralives could may well be stiff competition for The Sims. Some people think there's no way a small indie game like that could really compete with the monster that is EA, but if Paralives has the passion and enthusiasm to put the same amount of love into their game as there was in The Sims 2, then EA might have a problem if they can't do the same with The Sims 5. So what would it take for The Sims 5 to be the best Sims game so far? Well, obviously the Sims community is quite a lot of people, and everyone wants different things. The things I want might be the things you'd hate, so there really isn't any way to answer this question in a way that pleases everyone, but I do think there are things it could have that would make it an overall success, and those things are... A world editor. For a game that originally came from SimCity, it's really surprising to me that any Sims game would be released without a world editor, but it wasn't a feature in The Sims 4. Having a world editor undoubtedly helps bring your simulated world to life and gives you as the player more control over where your Sims live and how the world looks. The Sims 4 set dressing was pretty, I won't deny that, but it's not enough to replace the freedom of a world editor in my opinion. More personality. I've already mentioned The Sims 2 several times already, but I can't stress enough, if The Sims 5 is going to have more personality, I strongly suggest the creators spend a mandatory 10 hours playing The Sims 2 so they can really observe the level of detail put into Sims behaviour. I also mentioned earlier that quality does better than quantity when it comes to life simulation games, so on that note, I'd also add that I think it would be more beneficial to have fewer traits. Yes, I know, some of you will hate me for saying that. But I would rather have fewer traits in base game and have distinctive behaviours associated with the fewer traits than have a huge range of traits but the only real difference in behaviour is just the odd mood buff. 
but nothing in terms of actions. If I gave my sim a mean trait, and it means that subsequently my sim autonomously harasses people, steals toys from children, starts fights with others without my input, then I think it's a fair trade-off for fewer traits. Making quality the main focus will definitely draw more people to The Sims 5, and would even entice those that gave up on The Sims 4 back to the party. A quality Sims game is my child sim's mum yelling and grounding her kid for getting an F at school, my teenage sim sneaking out at night or throwing a house party when their parents are away. Basically, having sims autonomously react to situations that give them more personality and make the game more detailed. Mandatory features. I wasn't really sure what else to name this section, but it's basically a list of things that should 100% be included in the base game at the time of release. I think that having the items I'm about to list missing will definitely get The Sims 5 off on the wrong foot and will probably piss a few people off. So here are the things that should be included from the get-go. All age groups. I think it goes without saying, but every age group should be in the game at the time of release. If another age group of preteens is introduced, then even better, although I suspect they probably won't be included. The most important thing here is that each age group is different from the others, so elders have different clothing options, teens have smaller frames than adults, you know, so we can tell the difference. Pools. Is there much more to say about that one? Diversity. I don't really mind if The Sims 5 doesn't have a colour wheel for clothing and objects, but if at least there's a colour slider for skin, hair and eyes, it'll be much easier to achieve proper diversity in the game. Robbers. Let's get some challenge back in The Sims. Bring the robbers back and give our Sims something to worry about at night. Service NPCs like firefighters, police officers and social workers. Having these things make the game feel more alive. There's a big difference in immersion when a police car pulls up outside your house with its sirens blaring and an officer in uniform comes out to talk to you than if you just get a pop-up. When a social worker van pulls up and a social worker comes into your house to take your child away, hits a lot harder than your child just disappearing and a pop-up to say they're gone. It's the little things that make a difference. Grocery and clothing stores. Even if The Sims 5 isn't an open world, there should always be a reason to leave the house. Running out of food and having to go to the grocery store to stock up is part of life and should be included in a life simulation game. Same for clothes. I want my materialistic Sims to have a want to buy a new dress and have to get a job to afford to go out and buy it. Cars, school buses and taxis. Kind of similar to my point on NPCs, having actual modes of transport automatically makes the world feel more alive and contributes towards the game feeling more realistic. Then there's the Sims specific features, things that make them who they are, like family trees, memories, aspirations, wants and fears, attraction system and likes and dislikes. All of these put together with quality in mind will definitely create more unique individual sims. I would like to at least acknowledge that it's been heavily implied that The Sims 5 will be online. In all honesty, I wasn't too happy about this, but that's mainly because I don't really know how that would work. The Sims 4 is technically online because you've got the gallery, but I think from what I've read it's been suggested that The Sims 5 will pretty much operate as an online game. My main concern about this is that it might become a multiplayer game where you have one sim and one house, which would definitely be a deal breaker for me. Obviously this is just speculation and I really hope I'm wrong. I just don't see how an online game can allow for you to play as multiple families in multiple houses and have multiple life states. It poses a lot of questions, like how would that work? How would time work? What does that mean for expansions? What I'm really hoping is that the online multiplayer aspect of the game is completely optional, like maybe the game will have two modes, offline sandbox or online multiplayer. That would be the best scenario, I think. When I think about The Sims 5, I can't help but consider how The Sims 4 has been. 
It's our closest game of reference. And it makes me think back to some of my older corporate jobs where we had a saying that I think is pretty well known, which is, when someone sends an email, it's more for the sender than the recipient, which I think summarizes perfectly the mindset of doing something not because you want the answer, but just so you can say you asked the question. And I hate to say it, but I think that kind of translates to how The Sims 4 has been over the last few years. I feel like we've been getting lots of small gestures that don't really have much in them. Like, the kits are... they just seem a bit half-assed to me. The scenarios, they also seem a bit half-assed to me. They don't seem like they've been beefed out or given any real care. And I just can't help but feel that this is... The Sims equivalent of just sending an email, not for the benefit of the recipients, but just so that they can say they've sent it. Just so that they can say, oh well, we are continuously improving the game without actually addressing the bigger problems with the game. I feel like I've been making more negative kind of videos lately, and I feel bad for it. I promise this isn't just me hating on the current state of The Sims. I genuinely love this franchise. I'm just concerned that profits and deadlines are taking too much control over the quality of the game. Of course, those things are important, but if the game isn't being checked for bugs or had adequate enough time spent on them, people will eventually leave, and The Sims won't exist anymore. I personally am excited for the release of similar life simulation games, and hope that The Sims 5 can offer enough for them to all exist harmoniously. Because if The Sims 5 is just an online version of The Sims 4 with a different skin, its fate might be similar to its big sister, SimCity, which died a death after City Skylines offered a similar gaming experience with more detail and more effort. I genuinely don't want The Sims to go down the drain, and that's the only reason why I talk negatively about it sometimes. Anyway, I've probably talked long enough. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. That's it from me though. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe, you know I love it when you do that. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye